So now I'm very delighted to introduce Minister of Defense, Major General in Reserve, Yaakov Garland. He is the 22nd Minister of Defense of the State of Israel. Yoav Garland. Yoav Garland. Yoav Garland, not Yaakov Garland. Yeah. It's Yoav Garland. I'm not going to change your name because you are the Minister of Defense and we need you so much. We can't possibly explain. So he was the commander of, of Gaza uh, Brigade, head of the ground forces, the military secretary of uh, Arik Sharon, of blessed memory, the commander of the Southern Command, served as the Minister of Construction and Housing, Minister of Absorption, uh, Minister of Education, and Minister of Defense. I truly love listening to you on television and radio. You always talk about the history, uh, the Zionist history of this place, the biblical history of this place, and you're a man of value. You're the right man at the right time and the right place, and we want to support you. Hello and good evening. The founding president and chairperson of the board of directors of Reichman University, my friend, the professor Uriel Reichman, president of the university, Professor Rafi Melnik, head of Amman, uh, Major General Khaliva, head of the Institute for Policy and Strategy, my friend, uh, Major General Amos Gilad, distinguished guests. I am delighted to be here tonight. Since its inception, the State of Israel has been contending with complex security threats. Over the years, these threats exacerbate and change and take different forms each time. In recent times, we have been witnessing a very prominent trend of the uniting of fronts. Behind these threats in Gaza, Lebanon, Syria, Judea, and Samaria, with which we contend today exists one connecting line and a very tight connection that unites them all. This connection is Iran. Iran is the most uh, significant threat to regional stability as well as international stability, global stability. Iran is waging against the state of Israel a war of attrition with the help of its proxies along the borders, and at the same time, it exploits the time that it buys in order to operate, to establish its economic uh, power, and mostly in order to develop nuclear weapons. In the last five months since m I entered my position, and this is the main topic that this is the main topic that I'm preoccupied with daily and for many an hour, and this this is also the main issue that the security establishment is fo focusing its efforts. Iran has been waging in the last few years a uh, geographic overtake, an ideological overtake on the regional countries. Syria Lebanon, Iraq, Yemen, and also the Gaza Strip. These Iranian intentions go a lot beyond that. Under the uh, ages of changes in the Middle East, Iran is moving westward and is trying to create a terrestrial bridge over the Persian Gulf all the way to the Mediterranean. It is doing it through its proxies and aspires to impose its Shiite murderous ideology and the regime of darkness of the Iranians. At first, it built this uh, bridge in Lebanon and created a direct front against Israel away from its borders. 1,500 kilometers separate between Iran and Beirut. This distance is twice the distance from Moscow to Kiev. In Syria, uh, the Iranians uh, are trying to uh, build a Shiite Iranian militia east of the Hermon. They want to build what they created on its west. 
Hezbollah too in the Golan Heights and using the Syrian land as a springboard for a weapon that would break the balance toward Lebanon. Uh, since I assumed my position, the number of attacks of Israel has doubled against the Iranians in Syria. As part of this campaign, we operate in a very systematic way to undermine the Iranian intel capabilities in Syria, and these attacks cause a significant damage to those attempts to establish of the the revolutionary guards only a few kilometers away from Israeli borders. I would like to clarify uh, here tonight in an unequivocal way, the rejoining of uh, Syria to the Arab League would be insignificant for the state of Israel as long as Syria will continue to be uh, to serve as fertile ground for the Shiite terrorism and allow Iran and its proxies to operate from its borders. As long as that is the state of affairs, it will meet the power of our defense establishment. And this is also the place to add that the target is the Iranian operation and not the Syrian state. Iran operates above ground and underground in its many attempts to undermine stability in the region. I would like to present here for the first time another expression of the Iranian aggression in the form of establishing ter uh, floating terror bases. These images are before you. We identify ac the accelerated activity of the Revolutionary Guards in converting uh, commercial ships to military vessels. These ships reach orders of magnitudes of t dozens of t millions of tons. These are large commercial vessels, and these ships are large commercial vessels, and sometimes they can carry dozens of thousands of tons, and they are geared toward maintaining means of uh, warfare, missiles, uh, commando capabilities, sailing capabilities, and I will soon explain where this develops to. We identify an accelerated activity of the Revolutionary Guard to convert those commercial vessels, uh, which are civilian, to military vessels. They arm those vessels with many weapons, uh, UAVs, drones, system, uh, offensive and intel advanced systems in the aim of serving as uh, front uh, bases of terror in those areas that are very distant from the Iranian borders. All that you see here in these images are are floating terror bases. This is a direct uh, continuation of the naval terrorism that Iran uh, does in the Persian Gulf and the Arab Sea. It operates to extend its operations in to the Indian Ocean, then to the Red Sea and also the Mediterranean. We're talking about a very well consolidated and well planned policy that is there to uh, threaten the uh, sailing routes, civilian and military, and create an ongoing threat in the naval space. This is a pirate illegal operation that is of high concern. Israel, uh, Iran is operating like a group of uh, militia, not as a state. Those floating terror bases are already in operation. Only recently, one of these ships has been seen, and it sailed all the way to the Aden Gulf, away from Iran. Uh, when faced with this new uh, naval terror, Israel stands with full power and a high level of preparedness. This power relies on technological capabilities, naval capabilities, and other uh, options that I will not go into here. International cooperation, the creation of coalitions against this terror that is disseminated from Iran, besides uh, providing a reliable military response in every arena against any threat, will lead us to contend in an optimal way with the Iranian terror, be it on sea, in air, or land. Even in the Palestinian uh, um, arena, Iran is extending its arms. It extends 
a lot of resources and efforts in operating terror in Judea and Samaria and the Gaza Strip, and also in uh, mobilization attempts of Israeli Arabs. Iran is the financer, the trainer, and the disseminator of terror in the nearest uh, territories to us, from our borders in the north, all the way down to uh, of friction in Judea and Samaria and Gaza. I will only go into the numerical data. Uh, the annual investment of Iran in terror in the near proximity of the State of Israel, Syria, Lebanon, and the Gaza Strip, Judea and Samaria, it amounts to over $1 billion a year. The Quds force of the Revolutionary Guard spreads terror around us. It floods the territory with available cash, whose sole purpose is to assist all those who want to carry out a terror attack, even in the uh, lone uh, terrorist uh, frame work. This last operation was done in response to the uh, efforts of the Islamic Jihad to undermine uh, Israel with the guidance and the finance of the Iranians. In this uh, shield and arrow operation, in a very high precision operation, we did away with the top echelons of Islamic Jihad in the Gaza Strip. In the very significant first blow, within a few seconds, all the three senior officials of Jihad were eliminated in three different places in Gaza. Islamic Jihad in the Gaza Strip in its entirety were in a state of shock. This phenomenon grew stronger and more senior officers officers were eliminated throughout the days of the operation. The security establishment through the IDF and the ISS uh, exhibited new capabilities of sophistication uh, and inter-organizational cooperation that led to these impressive results. The results were achieved through the high quality intel, the high execution capabilities, the quality of commanding, and the ability to make decisions in the IDF and the ISS. We conveyed an unequivocal equivocal message of uh, actually taking a high toll from all those who seek to harm the citizens of the State of Israel. We made it very clear that those who prevent uh, children in Israel to sleep will never rest assured in their own homes in the Gaza Strip. We will reach there and we will settle the score. Already now, it is possible to see the, the way things look. Our enemies are deterred, our friends are surprised, uh, both by the capabilities, the audacity, and the resolve. The Jerusalem Day passed very quietly inter alia because of the results of the shield and arrow operation. It is very clear for any enemy that what the State of Israel did in Gaza against Islamic Jihad, it is possible, it is capable of uh, multiplying against senior officers in Gaza or in any other arena. And yet, I'd like to say from this stage to the Palestinians, and I'd like to tell you, the State of Israel has no interest in a military campaign in any kind of friction or clash with the Palestinian po civilian population. We want economic success and a high standard of living for Palestinians. And this has two values, both for the Palestinian population and for regional security in this region. Peace and quiet in the Palestinian arena is a clear-cut Israeli interest, and I dare say it's an Israeli security interest, uh, of course, as long as it applies to all sides. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished audience, one and all, I cannot see all of you from the stage. I have described to you so far the efforts of Iranian aggression in the region, despite uh, the grave seriousness grave seriousness of these actions. This is a, the minor, the second Iranian effort, and it is exercised in, all, in order to enable their main effort, which is obtaining nuclear wep weapons capability. Today, it is at its most advanced stage ever with respect to the development of its nuclear program. In order to demonstrate that critical place where the Iranian nuclear program is currently at, one can describe the Iranian effort to obtain nuclear weapons as a train that's speeding full force towards a tunnel that is in a mountain. The Iranian train is quite close to the opening of that tunnel. One 
once it enters that tunnel, one will not be able to touch it any longer. And once it comes out of the tunnel, and it doesn't matter how long it takes, it will come out as a train that is armed with weapon-grade nuclear capabilities, with nuclear arms, and that means the world will face a serious strategic threat in Israel as well as other countries in the Middle East will be facing a potential for an existential threat. This image, this metaphor, uh, very accurately conveys just how critical the junction we're currently at is with respect to Iranian nuclear capabilities. And this is the place to say, Uranium enrichment up to 90 percent will be a severe mistake that Iran will make. The Iranian regime in Tehran must know that this step will bring with it heavy prices and significant ramifications for the Middle East. And the Israeli security establishment on all its branches faces this Iranian effort with a very special and concentrated effort that its purpose is to prevent Iran from achieving its goal. Once again, I reiterate, as far as it concerns the intention of Iran to have nuclear arms, all options are on the table, all options. And to conclude, I'd like to thank you for this important stage, and I do hope that the discussions led here in this important conference will contribute to the understanding of the challenges we all share. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and have a good evening.